Good afternoon. Uh, finally, we reach this part of the build-up in my series on honorary astrology with a rather startling chart that we've looked at in the previous two videos. We've already analysed um, Saturn and Mercury in the last, and as you can see, this degree on the ascendant, the nine Capricorn 52, uh, is, a, is a prominent one with the, with the charts of the various elements relating to this question. I had a look at the chart of the W, um, the World Trade Organization, actually, which was uh, first came into being as a as a formal body on the first of January, nineteen ninety five, and uh, of course, yes, it has a ten degree Capricorn ascendant. So this eclipse point that we've been looking at, this hot spot, but this is a particular hot spot because the eclipse is the uh, movement against the um, uh, the powers of the sun, it temporarily occludes them and takes us into a timeless zone. Uh, and, and somehow within that, lots of things can happen. It's an interesting thing, that eclipse point, and I should be coming to it again in, rela in relation to this chart in a moment. However, uh, what we see here is if I am, if these uh, precautions, and they're very strong precautions against judgment here. If I am correct in this rule, that because Saturn is the ruler of the ascendant, and in fact turns out to be the uh, lord of the um, chart, um, if I am right in over overstepping that, uh, 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 let's say, that uh, stricture in order, then I believe this chart indicates that this Saturn is the strongest, and so the Saturn sides with the chart of the 1066 chart and is in fact a power. Uh, it's the most powerful planet in the chart, and so therefore the ruler of the first in the first tends to say that the nation is in charge of itself and not in charge by the other person or people involved. Naturally, I think this is going towards a very tense situation. And we must also see that it's surrounded by um, a, a conjunction of Saturn, a conjunction of Pluto, ready to come up in the future in the next couple of years, which marks a changeover from the old to the new, a destruction of form, a destruction of some kind of political agencies or structures in general, hierarchies. And we're moving through as if, as if it's a kind of demolition job, the world over. A new world order of some kind is approaching and we can see this um, uh, attacks against the uh, super states if you like. Um, there's a, a sense here uh, and, and a retreat into the uh, not necessarily nationalism but in the self-preservation instinct that we can see with Pluto in Capricorn and also Saturn. In China at the moment, the problems with Hong Kong leaving the um, uh, uh, leaving the auspices, if, if you like, of, uh, uh, of what it was a colonial uh, uh, a colonial uh, situation uh, with England, uh, used to democracy, and of course, naturally, through law and legal agency, uh, the Chinese government have decided that it it wants to bring it back into the fold of Chinese uh, control and rule, which of course legally is its right. But nevertheless, the people there at the moment are in a very stressful situation, not really wanting to be pulled back into a, a type of situation in which they feel uh, less able to be free. This chart actually shows us that it is a, it's all about freedom, and we can see this Jupiter wonderfully placed in the hopes and the peoples. And if you remember, uh, uh, this uh, ascendant uh, was the ascendant of a particular querent, a particular person, but it is changed into the voice or the question arising from the collective. And this is the way that I would like to see it. So. This chart does indicate that we will be leaving Brexit on the 31st. We will be Brexiting on the 31st of October 2019. That, however, does not mean to say this is the resolution of the general sentiment behind this question. The solution lies beyond the Brexit vote in some way, and I believe it lies in an eventual election once that deadline has passed. And remember, 
This is the dead line. This is the boundary, the end of the line. Saturn used to be known as the end of the line planet, and so therefore represents barriers, represents a kind of ultimate self-sufficient power, a law unto itself. And this suggests to me that it needs or wants at this time to maintain its island mentality, its sense of an island with the drawbridge closed up, if you like, or brought up, and so therefore feels protected in its own space. This is still inherent in the nation as, as a whole, and it is very worried about moving into a more conglomerate, connected um, uh, uh, sense of itself in relation to a, a bigger state, a bigger union of states, which will inevitably lead, as I say, if it continues, into a political union, a monetary union, a legal union, and all the rest. So what we have here is a crisis. Perhaps you could call it in psychological terms an identity crisis. What kind of nation do we want to be? And half, and half of it is somehow opposed. There are, as I said before, the progressives leading towards a new future. Hopeful. It doesn't really matter about one's particular identity. And I think that this focus in on, on, on the so-called national identity is seen by some as a retrogressive step. And yet this retrogressive step is built on a tradition of solidness, a tradition of hierarchy, of monarchy and of government, the separation also between uh, uh, politics and the church and also the uh, democratic situation, which is very held, I think, by this Saturn here. So this Jupiter represents what is democracy because the 11th house represents the hopes and the wishes and probably expectations of the people and interestingly enough also as we've seen in previous videos uh, parliament and so this sense here of uh, jupiter being in the 15th degree and retrograde is a peculiar position because it's going this way and that way. Government is divided at the moment as there is division in the country. But Jung has a solution to this, that when a, an opposition or a crisis of two halves, which cannot resolve, uh, we must hold the center until such time a reconciling symbol or unique situation presents itself. Now, there, this is a great uh, problem for individuals who are going through a crisis when their identity is changing, the old one is dying and a new one is coming to the fore. Old things uh, always somehow uh, uh, come up to the surface and defend against that change because there is fear. But this Jupiter is decidedly ambivalent. It's in a sign here, which of course has its own uh, uh, vivification of the planet. Perhaps it hopes too much. Perhaps this is too much of a good thing. It wants both sides. And as I say, this 15th degree suggests a kind of pull, if you like, in two directions. This one is backwards, but I was looking for some kind of sign in the collective to see whether this Jupiter position was valid. And in the last video, what I said was um, that it goes direct on Monday, which was Monday. And what did we have? We had an announcement by Boris Johnson that there would be a, an urgent overview of prison sentences and criminal justice and so on. So what we've got here is a showing that as soon as Jupiter turns direct, we have some kind of announcement in the collective of, a, of, of what's happening in jails, what's happening with uh, cr the criminal element, which is so linked to this tw rulership of the 12th house. Now, the other thing about the 12th house in a deeper analysis was it's always known or uh, in medieval times as the house of the bad diamond. The bad seed, which um, if anybody wants to look at a modern version of what the diamond is, they should uh, read uh, James Hillman's uh, The Soul's Code, in which he resurrects this idea of a tutelary spirit that is within us. A diamond of the medieval world is what takes us on our path in life, our conscience in many ways, which pushes us forward into the future. It doesn't tell us what to do, but it, it uh, certainly tells us when we go wrong. 
you could call this uh, the uh, compensatory element of the self which comes in according to Jungian psychology and instructs us through one means or another dream or situation uh, that we're on the wrong course. So the bad diamond can come in and cause all kinds of terrors. There's always a shadow side to fulfillment and self-fulfillment. And I think that this has been dominant. And this was represented by Jupiter retrograde. When it was retrograde, I feel this, the pull of the bad diamond, this uh, difficult situation to bring out conflict and uh, it brings it out of the open. It might have a, uh, an intentional purpose in the in the long run of things the bad diamond is always there to represent or, or to show when good times are good they're good but you have to have an opposite in order to show up what are those values that you hold dear and so but we move into the house of the good diamond because jupiter rules the 11th not only the um, government, not the government, the uh, parliament, which is divided, but a more positive tone. Uh, with the new government, we've had a change of direction and a change of dialogue. Something to do here with um, the forces of uh, positivity relating to Brexit. There has been a re-evaluation of the narrative in the land. And as I said here, this Saturn is exactly conjoining Mercury of the, U, uh, of the 1066 chart. There is a binding around the narrative, a consolidation of what needs to be done through the, gov through the agency of government, which is the ruler of the 10th house. And as we shall see, this represents Boris at the government as Lord of the 10th. This Jupiter position, as I say, both uh, is uh, an ambivalent uh, symbol here, a force of progress and freedom in the 11th house. But what does freedom mean? And unfortunately, freedom means two different things for two different sets of opinions. Uh, uh, freedom to uh, um, uh, live a much better and prosperous future in line with the uh, European Union, or do we be free of the associations and what uh, Anne, Widdicombe, Anne Widdicombe made a statement about it being a bit like or analogous to slavery. And once again, we see the theme of the 12th house coming in here because the 12th house represents slavery and bondage and uh, prisons and the criminal and the, 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 the sense that there's something underneath um, those, those uh, seething ancestral curses of old uh, which tend to come out when um, the bad diamond comes out and I think this has come out. I think the bad diamond is being seen and by that I mean all of those resentments of the past centuries. We see Scotland, for example, wanting to separate from England, but join with the un uh, with the um, but it uh, join with the European Union, um, and, and so it wants a kind of connection to a larger body, but not a smaller body. The same as the United Ireland has always wanted, and it's its total right to think so. And maybe Wales too. I am unsure about that. So they want not to links with the UK government that seeks to separate itself from the EU, but at the same time wants to connect with the larger body and um, uh, move with the consequences of a sense of greater freedom. So is this, a, uh, is this sense a liberation? Or to some people, a, the freedom, the, the, if we leave um, uh, the European Union, it means we're adrift or on our own. The island mentality of the old Englishers uh, set to preserve something but fail in a uh, dwindling mass of people in relation to the conglomerate mass of the European nations of the European super state. So, and we don't get much luck this, but I do feel that Jupiter has been shown, to, therefore, when it went direct, that this symbol made an appearance in the national sense as a discussion about uh, all of this stuff, the 12th house. And so I suspect that when Saturn turns direct, which will be in uh, mid-September, around about the 17th or 18th of uh, September, we shall also see a showing. 
think this positive moving Jupiter has some sense of a more positive spirit now that the at least the government and uh, those forces against it, let's say, leaving, and this doesn't represent the opposition as such, it represents those forces in opposition to those which want to preserve the, um, the independence and the, um, the uh, self-sufficiency of the nation. So this could represent people in different parties, represent people in different countries it's, it's, it's uh, all of those adversaries um uh, and so this this jupiter depends uh, uh, the, the freedom depends on who can get to it first if you like or what surrounds the dynamics of this jupiter so i suspect that in mid-september as as it moves towards the october deadline we're going to have some uh, pretty deep debates there could be votes of no confidence of that, I'm sure, and calls for an election. My personal feeling is that because the moon shows the future situation, um, uh, which I shall go through in a minute, um, this, the, uh, the conclusion to the matter is not finished simply because uh, there will be a leaving or a Brexit on the 31st of October. That is only the beginning. Elections after that will show other things, but I do feel that this moon eventually, especially the sextile to Pluto and the sun at the end of the matter here, uh, and it does make those sextiles, shows that there is a positive dynamic. But there's a bit to go through. As you can see, there is the sextile, to, so there's the square to Jupiter first, and it goes on, the moon goes on to a conjunction of Neptune, meaning a resultant confusion or a, a sense of loss or uh, abandonment or a feeling of uh, confusion. As Derek Appleby once said, whenever the moon applies to Jupiter, uh, confusion runs amok. That's what he said many years ago, and I've always liked that phrase of his. Derek Appleby, the... Uh, uh, the person that really started off honorary astrology in a small group of uh, astrologers back in the late 70s and early 80s and brought the, brought it back into being. His book, um, Honorary Astrology, which was published in 1985, the same year that William Lilly's um, book was republished, somehow brought back a revival of honorary. Okay, let's move on. The 10th house here represents Boris and the government and we need to see whether this symbolism is accurate in relation to the person of the government. Well we saw that 17 degrees is the voice of Churchill, his, his Mercury, and that Boris in some way identifies with him. But it's an interesting thing when I looked at the meaning of the word Boris of the name Boris Johnson. Johnson means in favour with Jehovah. Uh, which is the God of the Old Testament, but in generally refers to a, a divine purpose or a heavenly being, uh, somehow a, a connection to something greater than ourselves. Uh, Boris is a Russian name meaning fighter. And so here we have the Mars as the fighter, God of war, conflict, soldiery, and a, in general, a, a, a person that fights. Yes, it's, its color is red and it's put in here, but it's in the second deacon here of Leo. The second deacon of Leo is ruled by Jupiter. So here we have a connection both with divinity and the fighter. Uh, this has brought back, although it's in an intercepted sign in the seventh, uh, this he has brought in an interception. He's interceded, if you like, in this um, in the government who is divided and is clearly split it in two. He is clearly uh, pointing the way, and of course his emotions with his Mars in Gemini and so on and all this, we clearly see this. Um, so this person here is determined to put a cat amongst the pigeons, divide it up like any person would do with Mars, and make a clear distinction. He is somewhat overawed by all those in, uh, in opposition to leaving Brexit, but there are different points about what Brexit means, and if they are held by Mercury here, it's retrograde, it's going into the sun, so it's burnt up. Venus is a positive sign, and uh, the nodes here are quite positive. Um, Venus actually is quite good here, and it has a mutual reception to the moon, giving it strength, but it is still combust the sun. 
And um, Venus, in the end, gives a positive hope to those people who hope to prevent it. And there is a lot of activity here. I do feel that this Venus is strength, is in strength, and it's difficult to decide between the two, but ultimately I see Saturn as the victor. There are many fine points of analysis in that chart, that in this chart that I could go into. Um, but I do want to just point out the generalities and then leave it open for those who are so moved to look things up themselves. I have uh, been looking at this chart for over two weeks and I've searched my own conscience and read and read and uh, thought about this a lot. And I did want to make here a distinction between uh, what Geoffrey Cornelius has been bringing up for the past 20 years, a very important point about the distinction between judgment and resolution. The judgment of, my, of this chart is that we will be leaving at Brexit, but that isn't necessarily the resolution. It just gives us a pattern, an, an omen over which to follow, and I'm going to show you how I arrived at this conclusion in a moment, because there's certain startlingly, starting startling uh, symbolisms in here that point the way but ultimately it's down to me ultimately it's down to a sense of connection that i may or may not have with these symbols and to bring them uh, to a certain form a certain uh, rhetorical flourish if you like that makes sense in line with it and when this 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 line of description can be seen we can have confidence in the chart in fact, the chart told me in no uncertain terms, there is no authority that I can draw upon apart from my own and my own acumen and what I see, if you like, the voice of my own conscience. And the chart told me this because this 17 degree uh, Taurus here, which is the uh, uh, gives us the outcome or the final outcome, which is always a secondary reading in any RRE. We look to see this point as the final outcome. This is on the very cusp of my ninth house, which represents orrery astrology, divinatory astrology, prophecy, oracles, things to do with divinity and God and visions. All of those arts and crafts and formulations of, uh, of ideas in, to do with metaphysics and spirituality, those practices uh, that, that we partake of, the meditations of the spirit, if you like, and one of the divine arts there is our astrology. And so this, the, uh, the final outcome of the matter, um, uh, the, to find that, I needed to rely upon my own astrology. And so, also interesting enough, the ninth house is the house of science, that to do with which searches into the unknown, which is a different branch, if you like, of higher knowledge, according to um, the correspondences of the ninth house. And so, what I see here is this higher knowledge is a search in an experimental way. And I see um, uh, uh, all astrology as an intuitive science. And it can't be absolutely bogged down, if you like, in strict uh, technique. It, it, it is to do with the turn of symbolism in oneself and whether the, the omens, the augury, the uh, patterns or the symbolism of the chart speaks through one and then it clicks in one's mind or heart or conscience and then it is expressed. And so I see the symbolism of my involvement in this, as I pointed out very, very clearly. Now, we get to some of the heart of the matter. I want to, um, first of all, bring up this Saturn, Lord of the Ascendant in the Ascendant as the dominant power. Um, now you see here, I've used an old fashioned term from medieval astrology called the, uh, the Almutin, which in translation means victor. Uh, it's become known to be as the Lord of the uh, chart, uh, uh, the uh, genitur. And, um, but in medieval astrology, it was called the guardian diamond. And very rarely did it come out of Saturn, but in this case, it does. The Almutin, the victor, is the guardian soul of this chart. And it is reflected here in this Saturn. And it means, as I say, victor. 
very interesting discussion about the diamond and old medieval astrology. And I would refer you to the works of uh, Bernadette Brady, Chris Brennan, and uh, various other, other people, Zola, I think, um, I can't remember his first name, but they've done a lot to resurrect all the ancient studies of what went on there. Uh, it is a combination of um, positions. The Almutim was found by the uh, life-preserving uh, elements of the chart, thought to be the places of the sun, on the moon, the part of fortune, the prenatal syzygy points of sun, uh, and so on, and also the ascendants. So the, the point here is that when we add up all of that particular point system, which was defined, Saturn comes out on top as 36, uh, 36 points, and Venus comes out as 34. We still have a division about what is in the best expectations or the best, what is the hopes for the people. This is still divided, yet it is now in forward motion. And so therefore I feel that we'll be making a headway toward what is in the best interest of the people. But it is defined by this Saturn, and I find that it is weighed against these, and so therefore has the strongest uh, presence in the chart, and therefore affords us a victory. Now, there was another thing that I wanted to say here, that the moon often represents the action in the matter. And I've outlined here some of the uh, aspects, and it has many aspects to make. But because this is not an orary chart, uh, normal procedures uh, sometimes don't apply because this is a bigger question. And when what Lily says is that such bigger questions of uh, forward seeing are often not um, conducive to the, um, the vulgar rules of the art. In, in other words, we need to see beyond although use orary rules as a springboard. So we see the moon in this previous aspect was to a sextile to Uranus, and that was actually at a time of last uh, March. If you calculate it, it would be about four months away, uh, four months and a bit away, which takes us probably to the end of March, which was the last Brexit we were going to leave. Uh, Theresa May said something like about a hundred times during the course of the year that we will be leaving on the 29th of March. And so this was the supposed leaving, but the unexpected happened and we did not leave. Then it went on to the ascendant and then eventually you can see that the moon in the future moves on in a certain amount of time to this uh, Jupiter by square. Here we come to the crunch point. It suggests something like uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, about four months into the future, which is after actually the 31st of October. And I think that's where the general election will be held or something of that nature to um, see what, what, what truly is on the heart of the nation. I don't think a sec of a referendum will be held, but it'd be kind of like one. Uh, general ele elections are generally fifth house matters, but I see this as highly speculative. This is the house of the wishes of the people, and Jupiter in there represents democracy, being governing for all. And Jupiter, obviously, is Zeus and so on, who set up democracy in his, uh, the pantheon. You know, he set the, the female gods outside and the male gods. Yes, he stood as the king. You always have to have a central principle, but nevertheless, the uh, dominions of the earth and of uh, the psyche have to be divided. And so, therefore, they have their dominions and their rulership. So Jupiter is that god which brings democracy. And I do feel that this will be an election in about four months but then after that it does go on to a sextile of Saturn and uh, this sextile brings both Jupiter and Saturn together and so I do feel that, that, that in the end the best wishes or the best hopes of the people will be brought on to the government in, in authority and it will be in line with the will and the national identity because Saturn represents the victor, represents the lord of the genitor, and uh, will in fact reflect the general will of the people in the end. So this is a beautiful sextile, and even though these are not in aspect classically, 
they are in aspect by semi sextile. Now, it could be a little longer than that because uh, Jupiter retrogrades to about 14 degrees, and so therefore that takes up and then it moves on again. So, this is it's, these two are was always known as the ponderous planets, and that's because they moved very slowly. This sextile has been, and this semi sextile has been on a long time, and so therefore I feel it doesn't have the strength of a sextile. But nevertheless, there is a conclusion, there is a connection between these two that can be brought back together by the moon. I do feel the best wishes, expectations, and hopes of the people will be met through a general election in about four months. So, what we have here is then the moon moves on to the sextile of the node and uh, a, a conjunction of Neptune through which we will form a, a feeling of confusion. It goes to a trine of Venus, which brings the other side on board. Finally, a sextile to Pluto, bringing in those subversive elements into a unity of relationship and eventually a trine to Sun. The, uh, this is called the moon test or the lunar cycle test and it moves through and it suggests that in the end, probably in about 17 months in relation to this sun, then there will be a free flowing harmony, if you like, and the situation will be resolved in accordance with the will of the whole nation. So these are in for turbulent months. And I wanted to say a couple of other things here. Um, in relation to the question, a couple of finer points of symbolism which occurred to me in my analysis of this chart. Not only is uh, this uh, Mars um, uh, in uh, uh, Leo, if you remember the name Boris Johnson is represented here in the Mars symbolism. So this gives it a kind of extra weight or an extra showing in the reality of the lived experience. Now, uh, there was an old rule in medieval astrology, Cornelius Agrippa, three books on occult philosophy, I think in the third book, um, he indicates that when you found out the guardian diamond of the chart, which is the victor, the person that holds everything together, the sol invictus, if you like, and it's Saturn, which represents the nation, as we saw from the 1066 chart, um, uh, there is a way, interestingly enough, of finding the name. Or he gives a method by which you can find the name of the diamond. And it's too complex to go in here, but so I shall refer you to the medieval astrology site, uh, um, and uh, which has been excellent uh, in, in its showing and in its freedom of information. There are courses on there that you can take. Um, uh, but nevertheless, the method used was to take the ascendant and um, and see those those planets um, afterwards have fall on certain degrees after the ascendant. And those degrees are given letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And um, uh, what we find is that in the seventeenth degree of Capricorn, we find B E T H or Beth Beth, which is the letter B. And then at the 18th degree, we found G. And then at the uh, 22nd degree, I found the letter Zayn or Z. Now, uh, it's very strange, but, but I, I noted this down, trying to find the name of this Guardian uh, diamond. And when I wrote B-E-T-H-G-Z, any budding astrology student surely should know that uh, this is the very clear outline of the name of Betelgeuse. Now, Betelgeuse is a fixed star in the uh, uh, in the constellation of Orion, and in fact, is it called a red star, and is is indicated as being just under the right arm or the right shoulder of Orion the Hunter with his big club. And the symbolism applied to it was the coming of the branch. And what I saw was the coming of that, of the, of the club, if you like. And so therefore, this is the person with the biggest club. A very interesting dimension or turnout into the symbolism when we look into more occult or secretive dimensions of working out special points. Now, when I saw Betelgeuse and it's of the nature of Mars, the fighter of the hunter, I remembered something. 
Betelgeuse is to be found in the 28th degree, between the 28th and 29th degree of Gemini, which actually, if you remember back in Boris Johnson's chart, is the same as his son Venus conjunction. So Boris is born under that fixed star Betelgeuse, and the name of the victor here is Betelgeuse, or the, the coming of the branch, the club, the victor, the person in charge, the red planet. That was an interesting thing. The other interesting thing I found was that the, I believe that in the end, this Mars moving on to a trine with this Jupiter eventually comes to a pleasant agreement. After all, it is in the house of the seventh and so therefore brings some kind of mutual contract or agreement to the table. And it moves this in three and a half months, which comes to 31st of October. Now, uh, the, what I was thinking about, a vision, not a vision, but an image came to my mind about how do you connect Mars to Jupiter? Well, an ongoing trine is always a pleasant outfit, a, 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 a pleasant outcome in, in some way. It reconciles the government's position with the will of the people. It is a pleasant connection, and so therefore is an ease of relationship. It happens from within side, and so inside the, the house which represents the adversaries, but nevertheless is intercepted. He intercepts the house of the adversaries. But when I was coming this image, I saw a griffin. That's what came in. A griffin is a connection, is a mythical creature um, uh, that connects the body of a lion with the eagle of Zeus. Now, this couldn't be more clear with the eagle. The, it's, it's a kind of like this, and you can see it on heraldic, and particularly British, the uh, George Cross, the heraldic lions, which are actually griffins, and sometimes griffins are there on Welsh heraldic symbols as well. And so this is the lion and the eagle coming together. And the griffin was always put in charge of protecting those uh, vulnerable, uh, the treasure, and uh, was in league, if you like, with the sovereignty of the nation. And we can see here this. There's another point, the final point that I'd like to make. When this actually comes to this position of um, 15, 13, um, Leo, which makes it an exact trine to this. It's not surprising to me at all in the uh, uh, journey of this orrery to see that um, Winston Churchill's Uranus is, yes indeed, at 13, uh, 15, 13 Leo. So this comes to this fulfillment of its place when where uh, and so somehow the the voice of Winston Churchill seems to be coming into this quite clearly and interestingly enough also the nodes of William Lilly here are at 15 Sagittarius. So what do we see in this horoscope? We see a number of elements to come together in the analysis, some surprising turns of symbolism but it doesn't represent, I believe, a solution or a resolution. The turn of the symbolism at the end suggests that beyond Brexit, there lies the solution. But as to the matter of the question, it places it in a position, if you like, um, centrally, so that the, the, this, this central focus of the 31st of, um, uh, 31st of October will bring the matter to a head and I believe that at a certain point of tension there will be a reconciling symbol that we'll know. Now this what is the nature of this? Well I go back to the eclipse point on the cusp of the seven and I noted um, something that Geoffrey Cornelius said in his wonderful book, The Moment of Astrology, when he noted an eclipse on the cusp of the seventh house relating to the uh, marriage of um, Princess Di and Charles. He said this, here is the image of the destruction of the marriage. And so the marriage that we have had, the destruction of the marriage, the occlusion of it, a blackness comes across. And the when I was focusing on the image of this across the Capricorn uh, a cancer axis, the mother and the father, images of the nation, um, I saw an image of a crow 
flying off, um, connecting this Jupiter, the flight of the birds, along with the crow of Saturn. And into me, this represented a harbinger of very important change in the constitution of England and in the attitude itself. And so this is what I leave you with, with this image. I come back to the power of the eclipse that has uh, shown itself and revealed itself through the whole of these charts. And the power of that is the losing of the king, if you like, the losing, losing the power of one form only to be brought into another. Now, I see today that when I was listening to Bernadette Brady on the eclipse points and the new moons, and she goes back to the she brings back into the, the idea that older astrologers, when they saw an eclipse point, used to think that the king, if you like, was under some kind of danger or the uh, key principle, if you like, in the, in, in the state was under danger of collapse. It was secluded. It didn't have light. So what they used to do was that uh, they would get some um, other figure in and say, look, you can have the king kingship for a couple of months uh, while the, uh, the eclipse point goes over there. And then at the end of those couple of months, they'd kill the, um, the temporary king and put the other one back in order. Well, today I hear that, uh, very interesting enough, that uh, Jeremy Corbyn wants to do exactly the same thing. He wants to collude with the other side, form a, 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 a temporary um, agreement between all those factions of the adversaries to the government's aim, which is to leave, and, um, uh, and uh, with, with a deal or not, and then put himself in charge of the government in a temporary situation until the election comes about. Well, if that symbolism comes true, I'm not sure what to make of it, but it, it's very interesting that it appears that the person in charge and, and the, the, the Corbyn comes up with this idea of a temporary arrangement that he becomes leader in place of a Boris Johnson government if they can vote them down in, in a vote of no confidence. So we see this symbolism coming alive. I do feel that this tension will lead to some form of break eventually, and that uh, this will bring the country together, a kind of sign, if you like, that uh, something needs to be brought together in the psyche of the nation. So we wait upon that symbol. But until then, um, the future uh, lies uh, somewhere in one's ability to hold these two tensions and not to see a total disaster which either, either side of the fence we fall down on. There is something right in the showing in all of these placements of the moon, moving into sextiles and, 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 and so on, and eventually that trine of the sun heralds a, a success in the matter after all. It brings together, I believe, the Saturn from the first house to the sextile, and eventually it moves on. It's called a translation of light, and it moves that on to the sun, which, of course, is the rule, one of the rulers of the adversaries in the seventh house. Well, there it is. I hope you found that interesting, as I have, and uh, we wait to see the outcome and the results. Thank you.